I'm Tom Vassell. I am Z Garcia. Welcome. I'm Sam Healy. Welcome back. All right, it's our weekly, or well, whenever we do it weekly, top 10 list. And this time, our top 10 anticipated games from Gen Con 2019. It's coming. It's a coming soon. So this uh, episode is sponsored by Panasar's Games. Thank you to them. You can check out their games. We played all the games that are shown below uh, live just this past Tuesday. So you can see how they all work and you can go check out their booth. That's right. Um, so we put these lists together. Each year, we tend to get more Gen Con games before Gen Con. Yeah. It seems every year it happens more and more. Yes. So it always throws us off on... Uh, we do a top 10 anticipated game list, and people are like, well, you didn't mention this game or this game. And we're like, well, yeah, I already played that game. And that seems unfair. Right. But then we also want to have a sense of mystery to the list for ourselves. Yeah. So we, we're not, we don't like highlighting 10 games we've already played, because we like that game just as you do. That idea of, it'll be there. I hope it's good. If we know, then it loses a little something. So we compromised this year. What did we do? <laughs> We're doing a Sam list. <laughs> so our patented, the patented Sam list. Right. If you can't beat them, you join them. <laughs> so our first five games that we'll do, number 10 through 6, will be games that we've already played that are releasing at Gen Con, or at least it's the first Gen Con they've been at, because it's always a little hairy as to when the game exactly is released. Correct. The second five games are games that we haven't played, but we think are going to be cool. That's it. With that being said, it is quite possible, I don't know what the lists are, that a game that's in the first half of Z's is on the second half of mine. I guarantee, or... I guarantee that will happen at least a couple of times. Because yeah. we haven't all sure. played the same game. Right. right. Um, also, because we're only doing 30 games, there's a possibility that some amazing games don't get in the mix here. Just because of whatever. And it's probably not even going to be 30 games. It'll probably be could be 20. Sure. I don't know how much crossover we're going to have. I know. I feel pretty confident one of the games on my list is on Sam's. Like 100%. Um, yes. <laughs> it's on your... No. 100%. One of the games on my list is on Sam's somewhere. Um, hmm. But, uh, yeah. At the end, you, you can say, well, you missed this, this, and this, whatever. That's fine. You can mention it in the comments afterwards. Also, as... Time goes by. I'm making another list that will be released sometime early next week of 10 small games I think you should check out mm -hmm. because the, they tend to get lost in the crowd. Yeah, and I'll be doing a top 10 list of expansions to check out at Gen Con 2019. Some of those will be things I can vouch for and have played. Some of them just look good. And I'll, uh, there will be a mix. And then Sam and I will go through the whole list of games on Monday and hopefully get that done really fast. There's... Really fast? No. There's like 500. No, entries. well, actually, there's like 300. I don't tend to look at the demo ones. Okay. That's the list you that, usually make each year, the top 10 yeah, games to demo I at Gen Con. I probably will, if I can. I don't know that I've played that many games that are going to be at Gen Con, a full 10. No, just guess. Be like, demo this. It's probably good. Okay. Try this out. Who you knows? Heard it. You, my, Journalism. My top 10 guesses. At its finest. All righty. Well, here we go. Our top 10. Let's start with Sam. Number 10. All right. My number 10 is a game that uh, we've actually done a live play of here in the studio with the designers of the game, and that is Game of Thrones Oathbreaker. Mm. This is a really cool, it's put out by Direwolf Digital. They're going to be at booth 2507, and uh, this is a really cool social deduction game, and it's one of my favorite ones uh, now after I've played it. We played it, uh, I think, twice. Mm -hmm. on the actual live stream and I got to play both sides of it and that's one of the things that really kind of solidified it, solidified it as... Oh, sure, there's three sides. One of my... Oh, I know, but I got... Well... There's the king. He's a side. True. Or queen. But I, I meant the two factions, so to speak. The two halves of that conflict, whatever it might be. I know there's more than that. <laughs> I don't know. I don't care. Uh, but in the game, there's They're basically two halves thrones, in the game. So anyway, uh, this is a really cool social deduction game, and I really did enjoy it a lot. Game of Thrones Oathbreaker. All righty, my number 10 is a game uh, that we also played here some time ago, though I've technically <coughs> never played a final copy of this. This is Terror Below is my number oh, 10. Yeah. Really? Um, All right, cool. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. I uh, Tremors, the game. 
kind of, and it looks great. I definitely like the aesthetics. I like the... feels campy. I right. like the very tongue-in-cheek sort of vibe of everything. The weapons are uh, cartoony. Uh, you know, vehicles you're riding in will jump canyons and things like that. You're avoiding monsters coming forth from the earth. Uh, it just, it's sort of like a, a wacky 1980s adventure in a board game with big beasties. Yeah, I dig it, and I enjoyed my play of it. It's been a while, and again, that was a, a somewhat a somewhat of a prototype, so I'm excited to see the final one, yeah. see everything that's in there, and sort of give it a try again <coughs> from, from point zero, you know, reading the rule book, learning it all, and playing it. So, yeah, my number 10, Terror Below. Yeah, I really, this is a good one. It's, it's light. Uh, I have played the final version of it. Um, I think I reviewed it, or I know I've reviewed it. I don't know if the review has gone up yet or not. Okay. Um, but I think it's the only game with this theme that exists that's not a Tremors, the board game sold by Parker Brothers or sure, whatever. Right. So that's it's cool. It's a cool theme, yeah. All right, my number 10, I have already played 11 times. 11 In a times? weekend. Oh, uh, that was uh, Machi Koro? Yeah, Machi Koro Legacy. Mm -hmm. All right, oh, so. Oh, okay. Got <laughs> <it>. <laughs> it's very rare. <laughs> like 11 times. That happens all the time with all the games I play. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, Machi Koro Legacy. Each game is actually like 30 to 45 minutes. So, I played a few on Friday, and then Saturday morning I played some, then Saturday night, then Sunday afternoon. And it's Machi Koro, but legacy style. But it's actually closer to. Uh, campaign style in a sense. Mm -hmm. There's not a. There's very little destruction in the game at all. Okay. Um, you're, it's basically the same as Machi Koro, but they add mechanisms throughout the game, and I really liked it. It was a, it's a nice, easy introduction, and the cool thing about it is now that I'm done playing it, I have a nice Machi Koro set, essentially that is better than Machi Koro in the expansions, in my opinion, and it's not something that you will throw away when you're done. It's a final product, it's a game that's done. It's slightly customized towards my thing, although some of those customizations can be undone, or what have you, but it, it works well, and I think a lot of people are gonna like it. It's also a legacy game that you can start with your game group and probably finish, right? as opposed to some of them, which, you know, how many people are done with Gloomhaven? Yeah, that's right, don't put your hand up. All right. <laughs> no, there's probably people who finish Gloomhaven yep. too, but it takes a lot longer. Finish it two weeks after it was released. That's my number 10, Machikoro Legacy. Number nine. All right, my number nine is a game that I have played only once, and that was at PAX last year. Uh, the Gray Fox Games brought a uh, heavily demo copy of it, um, or rather prototypish copy of it, but at Dice Tower Con, I was able to see a very close to production copy of it, uh, actually mostly production copy of it, Reavers of Midgard from... Wait, this is number nine? This is number nine of the, of the ones that I've played, yes, and because it's, a, it's pretty much a heavy Euro game. It's a pretty this heavy Euro game. This is lower on your list than I thought it would be. That is, that is correct, because it's a heavier Euro game. Out of the three that have been put out, Champions of Midgard was the hybrid. What was the other one? N well, the other one hasn't come out yet. That's oh. the thing. This is, a, this is a series of three <laughs> games Sam's that they're putting out. speaking in the future. Um, oh, this, this is, is Gen Con 2021. <laughs> uh, uh, Champions was the hybrid, Euro game, Amerithrash hybrid. This is the heavy Euro game. The next one they're gonna put out is gonna be the heavy Amerithrash version of the game, and I'm anticipating liking that more, okay. which is why this one's a little bit lower. Got but, it. Production quality of this is off the chain. I love the dice. The board looks amazing, even though it has a lot of information on it. They managed to keep it picturesque and not looking like it had a whole bunch of information on it. Uh, so I really like the player boards, the way the cards are used. Everything about this is really fun, but it is on the heavier side of Euro games for me. You might look at it and laugh. Uh, but I think it's a pretty heavy one. My number nine, Reavers of Midgard. No one's laughing at the next one, because if it's more mecha thrash than the other ones, it'll just be a box with a couple of swords. <laughs> to open it up, and there's two spears, one halberd, you know, it's like, okay, and a morning star. It's like, uh, Instructions, right. have fun. <laughs> Roll for initiative, play till you win. We should mention that to make this list, at least I'm assuming we all did the same thing, is we use Board Game Geek, mm -hmm. their Gen Con... Kind of uh, convention preview. Mm -hmm. I then sorted it by 
Interest games for sale. For sale. Yes, for yes. sale. Uh, to get rid of all the demos. And so it's possible that there will be games there that are not on that list. And at the end of the day, it's also possible that something that we're saying is going to be there doesn't make it. Sure. It's possible. It's unlikely at this point, but it's But like guaranteed, Fantasy Flight's going to have something for sale there. Uh, yes. That it, wasn't on our list. We don't know it yet. It is what it is. All right, my number nine is a game I, I, the review should be going out very soon. Tomorrow, maybe. What? And this is uh, Parks. Uh, Parks from uh, Keymaster oh, Games. It's such a pretty game. Is uh, about visiting the U.S. National Parks is the idea, and it's a... Uh, it's basically a card game that has a central mechanism, much like Tokaido or games of that ilk, in which you have a couple of trekkers, you know, travelers. Ilk. Ilk. That always fosters a negative reaction to me, that word. That word? What word? I-L-K? Yeah. I ilk. like that word. Uh, you're going to take one of okay. your two travelers and move them. Bunch of ilk. Down the path. <laughs> <laughs> from the trailhead down the path as far as you want to, but you can never move backwards, of course. You also, it's going to be harder to land where someone else is, you know, and you're collecting resources and spending them to visit these national parks. That's the general flow of it. But there's a couple of interesting parts. It's actually a, a game I really enjoyed. Like Tom said, it's beautiful, very picturesque. Yeah, I walked in while he was setting up the review. I was like, wow, this is a really yeah, cool looking gorgeous, game. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous looking game. Uh, the, uh, the artwork on all the parks is based on a series of posters put out by an independent company, another company that makes these and sells them, I guess, in association with the national parks. So I really like it. Very nice. So uh, this is different than trekking the national parks. Completely. They're ju they just happen to share a theme. They're from different companies, different designers, they, and, and they are very different games. That game is similar to Ticket to Ride. Mm -hmm. This, like I said, I think feels a little more like Tokaido. Hmm. I'm pretty sure that bear is walking around in fish ilk right now. When someone says the word milk, but you don't hear the M, do you, like, shudder? How about if yes. I go, mmm, ilk? <laughs> That would be disconcerting. <laughs> that's grosser. <laughs> All, All right. right. Anyway, that's my number nine. Parks. My number nine just came in the mail today. That's timely. Say really. what? In Board Game Breakfast, we opened it. No. Oh. Man, this is Inception. No, it's the uh, Detective Club. Yes. The very first one we oh. got. Oh. Um, this was... The Red Herring. <laughs> this was published uh, by <sighs> another company in at, at Essen. I forget the company... Um, and then Blue Orange is picking it up and bringing it in. And man, do I like Detective Club. It is in the Dixit style of games, right? But the way it works is you're putting out cards, hearing a clue, except one person is kind of the, is like a, there's like a traitor that going on. And you are turning your cards over and explaining why you picked that card, right? So you get, a, you get clues handed out to you. You are saying this is why I picked that card, but one person's lying. They just picked the card because of whatever. But you have to make a credible reason as to why you picked this card. Mm -hmm. Really like it because it gives you that a little bit of chance. Even for people who are not really creative, you will do well in the game okay because sometimes you can, when you hear the clue, you're like, oh, that makes sense. This is why I picked the card. And other times, someone else, their reasoning is so bad that people will think they're the, the, the person who doesn't know what they're doing. So everybody about. knows the clue except one person. Sure. Then the card is picked. Then the clue is made public. So right. that one person now has and then to you backwards go, adjust. And, th and then you go all around the table okay, and explain why you picked the cards you picked. I it is it. super fun. That sounds neat. Super fun. Very conversational game then. Yeah. And it's afterwards some real laughter at people for their reasoning sometimes. Oh. Like, that's a really dumb reason. Obviously, it was not true. You're the, you're the person. And no, they're not. <laughs> they just, they're really, they picked a weird card. And they have a hand, a hand and Right, and sometimes you don't have hand. a card that fits that thing. Yeah, yeah. I like it. I like that idea. All Very right, nice. so yeah, this one's really cool, Detective Club. Number eight. My number eight is a game that I played a couple of times while at the, actually played it three times in two different settings at the Gathering of Friends. This is going to be coming from Libelude, uh, booth 1619, Obscurio. Obscurio ah, yes, yes, is yes. a game that, as far as I am concerned, matching theme to theme, has done away with Mysterium. 
murdered it, if you would. Uh, sure. It, it hit the ghost. <laughs> Okay. No, it gave up the ghost. Gave up the ghost. <laughs> That's not the... Yes. That Something is the like saying. that. Anyway, Obscurio and Mysterium have a very similar vibe going on. It's just that I I like the way Obscurio handles it better. First of all, it's more magical than it is paranormal. Uh, you have a that's magical true. book that's trying to find its way back to its spot in this huge library. Very Harry Potter. And it's, yeah. giving, uh, it's giving you clues as to where it's supposing to go. Without actually just We're writing it on you. the title page, Without, which would be no, super helpful. Without actually telling you. Yes, no, that's that correct. Would, no. But uh, the thing that I like about this is that it has a built-in traitor element to it where one person is trying to get everybody to guess the wrong spot. Right. And... The way that the book gives the clues is much better. You have um, two different pictures, if I remember correctly, and you have these little dials that you can set on the pictures pointing to a specific aspect of that picture. But then on top of that, you have this huge book that has like nine other pictures in that you have to show to the trader. And he will choose uh, one of those, at least, to go into the clues that are given mm -hmm. and it's just a lot of fun a lot of fun so I, I really enjoyed it if you are at Gen Con you need to go buy it and at least at the very least check it out and if you don't buy it well you're going to miss out and my number 8 Obscurio huh. that's, that's strong, I, but I feel like no 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 no, no, no. Praise I feel indeed. like that's a straight sense if you don't buy it you're going to miss out right it's that's, absolutely true that's a true statement absolutely I agree but you will be richer. No, you won't. Monetarily richer. They won't give you any money for not buying their game. Yeah, but you won't. You won't have spent the money. That doesn't make you richer. Okay, let me ask you something. If I go to a store, <laughs> Sam, yeah, uh huh, and they have a shirt. Yes. I am uninterested in the shirt. Correct. However, it is half off. Correct. And I buy said shirt. Uh huh. Do you know where you're am going I with this? Am I any more poor? No. Because now you have a shirt that you spent the money on. But I hate it. <laughs> then why'd you buy it, you weirdo? It was half off, son! <laughs> oh! I you can't leave that shirt just sitting there. Yeah, you can. Some other jerk's gonna come along and buy it, and then I'll see him walking out with the beautiful new shirt. It'll be like... Gonna... You done missed out, then. Wait, you just said you hate it. Now it's beautiful? But it looks good on <laughs> other people. <laughs> You're so weird. I know. I was trying to make a point. We're right, clearly. It's okay. Uh, let's move on. Um, my number eight is a game I've played quite a bit called Hadara, coming out from Z-Man Games. It's a bit similar to Seven Wonders. Uh, it is sort of a drafting game that takes place over two phases. In the first one, it's a very prescribed phase. You are going to take one card from deck yellow, and then one from blue, one from green. In exactly that order, everybody's sort of drafting simultaneously. And you have very similar choices. You keep the card and buy it, or mm -hmm. you chuck it for some money, you know, mm -hmm. sort of those things. Now, the second part of every round is a little more free form. Because when you do the first part, you take two cards, do something with one, discard the other. You have to. During the second part, those discards, we go through those, where you on your turn take one and buy it, or discard it for money, or whatever. But then you don't have to do one yellow, one green, one blue. You could go heavy into one color, that, that discard pile. So that part lets you customize kind of what you're going for. It's a smooth design. It is a very clean concept. I really like the look. I like the decision points. I like that when you hit like, like stage two after stage one, suddenly the prices for everything goes boom, and you go, I can't afford this. And then it happens again for stage three. So I like that. You got the same thing in, you know, in Seven Wonders. Uh, it's a game I have had a lot of fun teaching and playing. So Hadara, highly huh. recommended. I, I still have not played this one. I oh, you have it. it? No, I haven't. Oh, oh okay. It's a really, it's a really good well, game. you know why? Because someone kept bugging me at the end. Like, you must play this game. And so then I you was rebelled. like, who was that? <laughs> I'm not going to play it. Who could that have been? All right, my number eight is not even a game. I know. At, well, it is a game-ish. It's a set of books. And oh. that is Crusoe Crew. Now, this is from... Uh, Brouhaha. 
Uh, 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 this, this is from uh, Van Ryder. Van Ryder Games, yes, thank you. I uh, Van Ryder Games. Down. So they're they have a set of books for adults to go through. But okay. what Crusoe Crew is, is is for kids, although you can definitely play this with your kids, no problem. What's cool about this one is that these books are part of a series of graphic novels that you flip through the pages and you go th from one number to another number and make decisions and stuff. Crusoe Crew has four people, or up to four people, because you can play with less than four, and you all have the exact same books from your kid's perspective. So you all will turn to the same page, but sometimes the one kid, as you can see this kid here, he's taller than the rest. So he might be, if you get to a fence, he might be able to see over the fence in his picture and see something that everyone else doesn't see. That and then awesome. one kid is really strong, so when they get to a wall, there might be a number on the wall because they can punch through the wall. So you have to work together, but each kid has their own one animal. One can talk to animals. Oh, one of them's a weirdo then, got it. <laughs> No! <laughs> Talk to him. Like one's strong, one's tall, one's tall, fine. One is, I don't know, hungry. Okay, but one of them can talk to animals. <laughs> well, That's... it works. No, man. Well, the whole situation's kind of weird because they forgot his. Pills their dad is a pirate weird. and he's six, so they're like, "We'll go get treasure for your dad." Oh, that's So cute. he sends that's his cute. kids out to get treasure. It's like, um, good parenting there. Good job, Papa. <laughs> but so, it's. I've never seen this in person. You told me about this before, and even from the first time you told me, it sounds fascinating. I love. It really that. is fun, and it's also you can play it at least three times because. You will, at the beginning, you get like a map, you pick an island, you go to, and all kinds of things happen on an island, but there's multiple islands. So at, yeah, at a certain cool. point, you'll get to the end, and there's actually a scoring and different gems and things you've found along the way. You keep track of that. Mm -hmm. So you might see some, you could even play it again and try to get a higher score. That's cool. It works really well. Uh, that's Crusoe Crew. Nice. Number seven. My number seven is a game that we have played live from this studio. You can go back and watch it. We got murdered by it the first time. Mainly because of some poor decision making on <coughs> somebody. Oh, oh my word, no! Um, is this is Zombicide? It must be Zombicide. Zombicide Invader. Zombicide Invader. Go this watch the tape. Come on. I know that was me. Booth number four, Cut 17. Cut to the replay. <laughs> <laughs> Um, well, I'm pretty sure you like ran outside with like your basic no rebreather, yeah, like, and you, no nothing. Oxygen. You just ran right so, outside or something. I hold like my that. breath. <gasps> <laughs> but uh, if you've not jumped on the zombie side train yet, you're missing out. I think is what's coming. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying, and you like <laughs> sci-fi games. This is where you should jump on. That's because a, yeah, this yeah. is a this is an alien esque feel uh, to a game. I mean, it's got spawn points and and we're we're talking like even when you search, you can have things pop out, and that's one of the cool things that they added to this yeah. to this uh, universe. Sam says cool. I game. said uh, I, that made me sad. No, I it's... pulled those out of my Black Plague. Huh? You know, in Black Plague, sometimes in the deck when you flip one, it's an ambush. Yeah. I love, they're gone. You pulled those out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> Come yeah. on, man. How am I opening a shoebox? Oh, a zombie. Yes. No, <laughs> man. I it's expect not to find, in a shoebox. I'm it's sorry. Like in the the only thing there. I expect to find in there is like water or a dinner fork you or something. You were focused That's on it. the shoebox and it popped out of the corner when you weren't looking. Uh, Come on. No. There's zombies. The first thing we do in a room. Plus, they don't have shoeboxes in look Black for Plague. zombies. Where do they keep their shoes? <laughs> Okay, so let's say I go to a store, right? It's a pair of shoes. <laughs> like shoes made out of wood. <laughs> like boxes made out of wood. Not know, our conversations are so dumb these days. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, this is a this is a great sci-fi implementation of, of the Zombicide system, and it's really fun. Um, and some people might say it's too easy, but I don't know why you would say that. I've had a lot of good luck playing the scenarios that I've had. We haven't we haven't lost once, except really? for the time that oh, we. Played. Why is he not Kuda in this? <laughs> I wasn't there at the time. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> but uh, this is a great time if you if you enjoy Zombie Side, it's almost a shoe in. Eh? There you go, baby. Uh, but uh, it's just that's the way it is. I, I, oh, I really do enjoy goodness. this version. Number seven, Zombie Side Invader. All right. Well, my number seven. You went to space. We're gonna stay in space. Ooh. And I have an exp uh, a review rather for this coming out soon, or just came out. I can't keep these things straight. 
Oh, this is D A. <sighs> you mean no, B A? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I want to keep calling it Dark, Dark Angel, Angel because oh, the there's the Dark, Dark Angel. Angel, Black Angel, Black Angel, Black Angel coming out. Um, this is a reworking of a couple of things, or inspired by, let's call it. Wow. Inspired by Twa. There's also Solenia that came out, but that actually was inspired by this being in development. Didn't you call that Solamia at one point? Solamia. That's funny. You did that, I'm pretty sure. I never have made a pun about a board game name to say that it's bad. I'm sure you said this is Solamia. <laughs> anyway, I but like I Solenia know. a lot. I did not like Twa when I played it, but it's been honestly over a decade. I don't recall why I didn't like it. This was great. Uh, it scales very well. Yes, it's a big epic Euro game. It's got a lot going on, but the iconography is really good. The uh, the interest is there. This is a game that is takes a couple of hours or so and keeps me engaged the whole time. There are plans you put into place that become fruitful many turns later. There is input luck, as in you roll dice and you have to deal with them, but there's a lot of ways to manipulate all that, so the luck is also minimal. There's a lot of reacting. I really enjoyed it. I had a blast with this game. Cool. Um, and like I said, it really scales well for me. I played two-player, where they I read the rules and I said, well, you have to use a third-player bit. I'm like, oh, no. It's actually really hands-off. And as you play through the two-player mode, the third player vanishes slowly. Like, you, you have to only set them up, and eventually you're doing enough where the game removes that part out of it and you can stop worrying about it. So you like the death of the invisible third person. Yeah, that's the expansion's name. Black I Angel. can never death. tell with Z if he's in, like, a, a Euro or not. I know, it's hard. Like, Pulsar 2849, and he's like, this is garbage. And then this one, he's like, that's amazing. This has theme. So does Pulsar 2849. Okay, no, no, I can't even go there. It does, but it's not very good. <laughs> No, that has I numbers. Would say, I would okay? say that discs same thing and this. numbers. It's got a theme. But uh, it's this not, is this okay. is mechanical. I, I really like it. I liked it a lot. No, um, I, I enjoyed it too, but it's 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 not. The I first would, play I wouldn't say it has a strong theme in it. This I agree, but I like it. I like it too. Yeah. The first play of this is rough though, because there's a ton to learn. Z incredibly rough. Z yeah. is the one who reviewed it because when when, when we do a review. If someone likes it the most, usually they get to review it, so that's why. And it definitely, again, from multiple plays, got better. Once I knew the system, I could manipulate it a little more, and that was real fun. Okay. My next two games are surprises to me. When I played them, I wasn't expecting anything. Oh, I thought you, oh, yeah, I thought you meant like he doesn't know what they are. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, when I played them, I was like, wow, this is pretty cool. So number seven is Master of Respect. This mm, one really one. came out of nowhere for me, and I, I, I love the artwork. I love the... Simplicity of the game. I like the asymmetrical start that everyone has. I like that you can take an action and other people can follow it. I like matching the action with your person, buying custom actions, buying custom people. And yet, it sounds complex, but the game is really tight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it plays fairly quickly. This is one that's gone under the radar to some degree, but it's, I think, because when people look at it, they think it's a Samurai Jack. Uh, yeah, it does have a themed game, look right? It, yeah. And you look at it, you're like, oh, is this a kid's game or whatever? It's not a kid's game. It's a straight up, I mean, what would you call right it? Middle, action selection? Looks... Yeah, it's kind of a simultaneous action selection game, right? Yeah, but it, it's it good is stuff. super I was, fun. I was very happy with this when you taught it to us. Yeah, this that is dude good. in the middle even looks like Samurai Jack a little bit. It really does. That's an old Sam that's Samurai Jack after he retired. Yes, there you go. Now he's huh. training more Samurai Jacks <laughs> and Jills. Now he goes by yes. the full name of Jackson. Samurai <laughs> Jackson <laughs> Senior. Anyhow, that's a cool game. Master of Respect by number seven. Number six. All right, my number six. Top of the ones we played. My number one of the ones that we've played. That's right. If you own Memoir 44 and you do not go pick up New Flight Plan, something is wrong with your head. Ooh. <laughs> because that is how good this expansion for Memoir 44 is. Uh, this I wish you were more if definitive on your statement. You really have to be more I direct. feel like you're a little wishy-washy. Yeah. Uh, All this meandering gets us nowhere. I, I can't. I know I gave it at least a 9. I might have even given this a 10 because... But you said you don't give 10s. I rarely give 10s. I rarely He's give 10s. He's done it twice, and, <laughs> and one time he took it back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean to tell you, the new oh, flight plan for MMR 44 is what 
the air pack wanted to be and never was. This is how it should have been done. It works with every scenario. If I'm not mistaken, it works with every scenario that is currently available in the Memoir 44 system. The models are amazing. The combat cards, the combat card deck that you use, the way it's implemented, how you can bring um, new planes onto the, the board, how they interact and they stay around and can be ordered by the regular cards. Everything about this is an amazing expansion. Again, if you are a Memoir 44 fan and you have not yet purchased this because it is already available, you need to go do that. <laughs> You will be rich. Purchase your plane ticket now. <laughs> and make sure you're at Gen Con to purchase. I'm just kidding. Don't do that. Anyway, Days of Wonder, booth 1429. You need to go do that. So, my number six. So, we're putting expansions on the list now. Memoir 44. Hey, you didn't, you didn't say we could. No, we didn't. New I didn't. flight plan. Well, of course, I put a book on, I guess, but. Yeah, yeah that's, that's true. That's fine. All righty, that's me with my number one pick of the things I've played. And this is a uh, review came out last week. I think Imperial Settlers Empires. What? Of the I did not North. expect this to Say be what? on the list. I'm surprised. I just played this again uh, yesterday, was it, Chris? And I believe he liked it. But it he wasn't as good as the, it awesome. wasn't as good as the game me and Sam played yesterday. Oh, at the yeah. same time, it, you did seem to be having quite quite the ball. Yeah. Uh, if you this choke is a very on the ball. And <laughs> <laughs> Hairball. <laughs> yes. That was the worst game I played all year, I think, actually. So really? Far. <laughs> That's an achievement. Uh, so far, yes. Well, this is one of the best games I've played all year, and it is it uses the same theme or or sort of the same setting, same world as the other Imperial Settlers game or games now. But it gives you new ways to interact with that world. There's now a little bit of an action selection mechanism going on. There are cards that trigger by taking actions that have nothing to do with building a card. There is sailing. That's a, a main component of the game, sort of deploying a ship and going over to an island and either conquering that island, making it part of your nation, or just pillaging them and taking their stuff. And then pff, get rid of that card. Uh, it's really neat. It combines some ideas from, from Imperial Settlers, some ideas from 51st State Master Set, but then, solidly, 60-70% of this is brand new stuff. That doesn't really feel like those games. Hmm. Really enjoyed it. Great look, fun, engaging, connections of mechanisms. Uh, definitely give it a look. If you like Imperial Settlers and you don't buy this, <laughs> I'll find you. And he when has, I do... He has a specific set of skills. <laughs> He can roll <laughs> dice all day long. There you go. So that's my number six pick. My number six, like I said, was a surprise. This one is the most recent game on my list that I played, and I really fell in love with it. It's really simple. I didn't expect it when I saw it to make the list, um, and that is Horrified. This, yes, man. this yeah. game, and I bet you might have even considered this for your list at a point. You know, I've only played it the one time. That's why it's not on my list. Uh, though Terror Below I only played one time also, but um, easily this could have been my 10 or 11. This is, this is a I was really impressed, man. This is yeah. a cooperative game in which you are some heroes fighting against the villains from the Universal Studio monsters. Right, monsters. So you have Frankenstein's monster, called Frankenstein for short. Uh, Dracula, the mummy, Wolfman, the invisible. creature from the Black Lagoon, the man. and the Invisible Man. Mm -hmm. But you don't play against all of them. You pick two, three, four, depending on how hard you want the game to be. Yeah. So like two is easy, three is normal, four is hard. That's right. And then some of the monsters might be harder than others, I think. Like I think Invisible Man is harder than, because he, the Invisible Man runs around the city like stealing your stuff. Mm -hmm. And you can't see him. Yeah, that, you have to He's figure out where he is. Harder. To beat each one, you have to do something specific to beat them. So the look of the game is amazing. It really super is. high production, super cool. It's a straight up co op game where you are, each person has special abilities. You are essentially running around doing tasks trying to beat these monsters, but the monsters are coming after you, trying to take you down too, and going after innocent people who just show up in town. They're like, hey, <laughs> I need to go to the barn. Well, I'll help you get to the barn. If you keep them alive, you get rewards. If you let the monsters kill them, then you that's how you lose yeah, the game. The terror, too many deaths your terror happen. track goes up, and if it caps up, that's it. And, uh, man, this is 
this slightly, it's, it's about the same level as base pandemic, as base pandemic. Uh, Maybe, yeah. You know, it's it's not. You dissimilar. forget how simple base no, pandemic I agree with is. You. Sometimes. No, it's not very dissimilar from that, and it has some of the same ideas: moving, gathering stuff, um, planning out your three or four actions. That's another thing that's neat. The characters have different differing numbers of actions based on their special power. Like one character, for example, has five action points, but and they that's have it. no power. And then there's one person has only three action points, but their special action is they can move to any location on the board. It's pretty, it's pretty powerful, wow. right? So it's like I could just be like, boom, I'm at the university, two, and then gather these things or whatever, you know. And so yeah, I, I it was very liberating. It made me think of Witch of Salem, but Fun. with coming in from a point of view of liberation, like oh, in your turn you can pick up items. How many? All the ones that are where you are, just get them all. I can move, you know, but there's no restrictions, and and so, yeah, that's kind of how I felt about it when I played it. Really, the theme liked. is original. I mean, there's a lot of monster games out there. I'm getting tired of the same old Cthulhu or zombies. This is different. Mm -hmm. It feels thematic because the way you defeat, like Frankenstein and Frankenstein's bride, you have to make them human. Human. Right? Yeah. You have to like convince them that they're not monsters. The Wolfman, you have to cure him. Uh, while the mummy, you need to put them back in their tomb, and Dracula, you just need to straight out kill him. And if, after taking out all his Man. coffins all over town. Yeah. yeah. Really cool game. I really, I think this one is going to get a, actually a pretty big buzz once people start playing it, because it looks like you know that IP game. In fact, this would have made my list had I played it when we made the IPs last. Yeah, year. yeah. I think well, I played I it. I think I played out, it that night for the first time. I think time. it comes out from what I've seen online. On the first of next month now. And the big Target swarm Target, of games. Target, and yeah, you can get it at a few places, but Target will be one of them. And I saw that when I read it, and I saw that, I'm like, I'm, I'm buying one. This is, I'm putting this in my collection. I feel left out. Well, the thing is, when I first opened Definitely the box and I looked at that cover, at glance, I thought it was Stranger Things. Yeah. Because it has that same kind of vibe. Yeah. But yeah. it's not. Great Although, choice. Great choice. Man. All right. Horrified. Let's go to the games we haven't played. Number five. All right, my number five is uh, I have played Ticket to Ride New York, and I have not yet played Ticket to Ride London. Really? I haven't. Nope. I haven't. No. I don't think we even have Neither have we. Yes, you have. No. You played it at The Gathering. In London. But, um... You played it at The Gathering, too. Did I play it at The Gathering? Yeah. Oh, maybe I did. It was at the gathering. I know I saw it there, and you said you played it. Eh, so yeah, I'm who taking knows? your word for it, I guess. I, well, I played it a lot, actually. I didn't it technically takes like, see him it. Playing it takes like 15 it, so minutes, you know. It's, it's such a short right. game. But, I mean, I really enjoyed the New York version of it, the smaller map, the constrained, all that kind of stuff. I really enjoyed all of that, so I'm assuming that I'm going to like this, too. But I really want to give it a try. DOW, uh, Days of Wonder, 1429 booth. Uh, go, get a, go give it a check out. I really like this idea of taking and scaling Ticket to Ride Down, making it shorter. Yeah. Um, not that it was terribly long to begin with, right, right, but right. I like the more compact version Also, double-decker buses. Me and Sam rode one one time on the roof. It was fun. Yeah, that was... Did we go on the roof? Yeah. I wouldn't, on the outside I'm of not, the bus? I'm not riding in no garbage bottom floor of a bus. Yeah, but I don't think... It, I think it was still enclosed. Well, it's still the roof. It's just yeah. an enclosed roof. It was still enclosed. It's not the roof. The roof would be on the outside, yeah, like Spider-Man does it. We rolled the second level of a, of a double I felt deck. like it was open. Well, anyway. No, it wasn't. I, I know All that. All right, well. Fact. Anyway, uh, take it to ride. <laughs> These are illuminating conversations we're giving. <laughs> Riveting content. All right, my number five is uh, Spyfall Time Travel. Man. Yeah. I considered this as being one that I've already played, and it didn't quite make the list. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Okay. I okay. think it's close to the same thing. Right, and that, that's that's why. Although but this I, theme I, looks I way cooler than the it. original yeah, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. I like the idea of the cards being from different times. You know, it's locations also, but it's that ability of being also anywhere in time that's interesting. Yeah. I do worry on the flip side of that that it might be way too apparent where someone is or is not hmm. because you know like i saw some of the cards said like space station 2042 and then like you know uh venice during the black plague right it's like well i can pretty much 
shoot down a whole lot of things with a single question. Sure, but if you're too obvious, then you give it to the spy, too, though. That's what I'm concerned about, that it's... Well, then you got to answer properly. What's... Like, if I say, can you breathe outside? I thought it would, I thought it would, I thought it would, I thought it would be interesting. I, again, I, did, I, I actually didn't look at it. I'm already interested in it, but I didn't look at it because I'm just assuming if it's more of the same. But is it is ultimately yeah, but the the cards are not supermarket and you know whatever whatever. It's locations in history and places and also around events. But some of them are made up because they're futuristic. Just thinking about it, I think it would be interesting to have the same location from different ter- periods in time. Yeah, that would be interesting too. I thought that would be interesting. Yeah, and I was hoping that's what it was doing. Not that quite, might be a no. little trickier. Like, what am I holding? Um, A microwave. All right. (laughs) Yes. Black plague. (laughs) Anyway, that's my number five, Spyfall, time travel. That's cool. My number five, I played before it was redone. So I'm not counting it. No, 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 no. They redid the whole game. Stretch. (laughs) Stretch it. Yeah, but I couldn't put this. I I couldn't put this on the ones I played before because I think they've changed it enough that I don't know what the new game is like. And this is from Peterson Games, and it's Startropolis. Okay. Startropolis. Yeah. Do you remember seeing this way back in the day? Nope. Startropolis is a tile placement game, except it's 3D. You're going to be buying and drafting pieces of a, a space station and putting them together. Okay. Whoa. Okay. So when you... Each of these things will give you different points based on how they're put on. So when it's your turn, you pick up the space station uh-huh. and you manipulate it 3D. Like in, and, uh, yeah, in your hands. Okay, got it. Uh, it looks really cool. I know the plastic part's good because Peterson Games, That's they, they, they own well. a plastic company, I'm assuming. Have you seen Cthulhu <laughs> Wars? Yeah, right, right, yeah. <laughs> so... You know that the plastic pieces are going to be cool. And I like the whole concept of, you know, a tile laying game. You're just there. I put the tile here. This, you can pick it up, move it around. How do you put the pieces Man. in? Okay. How the rest of the game plays, I don't know. I don't know exactly how you get the pieces. Um, I don't even know how the points work anymore. But I do know that that looks really cool. That looks like a lot it's of like fun. It's like a toy, yeah. you know. It's very high toy factor. That's the thing. I, I, I didn't even see this on the list. When did this get added to the list? Well, it was under Peterson Games. They have several games on the list, so uh, I guess it's easy know. to miss. It's easy we to go by because the it. cover Star Tropolis doesn't. I don't know because I, I I don't have the. I'm not really calling it nostalgia, but I don't have the history with it that he does. So I don't know that I would have picked. I definitely wouldn't have picked it based on the cover. Okay, that yeah. is true. I would also have picked it based on the cover. But I might have picked it based on the pieces when I looked at them. But right. I might not have looked at the pieces based on the cover. Right, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I, I mean, have, there's I that. You know, if you had looked at the pieces, would you have pictured that cover? Yes. No, you wouldn't have. I would well, not have. I mean, no, the picture looks a lot like what the pieces would look like in the game. So. Except they're not as brightly colored. Right. right. Well, you but paint mine. I would not have clicked through because of the title and the picture. Startropolis. I agree. That's, that's That looks boring. But, I mean, it looks amazing. Yeah, but here's the point. This is our job, to point out cool-looking stuff. Yes. Understood. All right. Well done. Well all right, done. but the next the next four I have no clue about them at all. Mm-hmm. Well, actually, that's not quite true. You'll see. Mm-hmm. Number four. My number four is from Chip Theory Games, booth 2719, and that is Cloudspire. Cloudspire is... It looks really neat. Um, I, I've always liked their That's poker weird. It says chip. First edition. I didn't notice that on the box. Uh, That's like a premonition. <laughs> there will be a second yeah, edition. Right. I guess so. Um, I've always liked their their poker chip ways of oh. handling things. Um, they're, you know, the warriors and the units, they have all the information they, they need on that little uh, chip. I like that. This also has a modular system. Now, that's a picture of a prototype, so I don't know if it's going to look exactly like that. But I like the artwork, um, and I like the fact that the, it's a modular board, and I also like the idea of the, the, the poker chip units and all that other kind of stuff. I've, I've liked Chip Theory's games in the past. Uh, Hoppelmachus is one of the ones that um, I think I'm the only one uh, or one of the a few of us that, that enjoyed that game, but I really did enjoy it. I didn't it. dislike it. I just thought it was okay. Right. But it really pales besides the... 
uh, too many bones. Too many bones. I mean, right. that's a, that's a game. Strangely <laughs> enough, I haven't actually played too many bones, ever. Yeah, I don't so, know if you'd like it or not. I, don't I think know. you might. It's yeah. it's a kind of an in-depth game though. Yeah. Has shades of has a lot of bones. Gloomhaven so. in a sense that it's like a. Well, you ignore bad jokes, Sam. You don't give any kind of How many bones are in it? How many bones are in it? How many bones? So that's my number four, Cloud Spire from Chip Theory Games. Go take a look, booth 2719. Too many clouds. <laughs> All right, my number four, I think, is Mountains. Yeah, yeah, okay. I went back and forth on a couple of these. Um, uh, this one is from Haba Games, one of their family. Line. This is like a sequel to the Parks game that you showed earlier. It kind of does, huh? I don't know too much about this one, honestly. I, I like the Haba family line. There's a, a several games out of that line that have come out that have been hits for me. Why I know, know you like name, some. Why do I know the name Carlo Rossi? Carlo Rossi just recently did. Oh uh, gosh, you're gonna hey, have talk to talk about it this up. one. I'll look it up. Uh, I don't have a whole lot to say. It looks interesting to me. Uh, there were a couple of already sort of <laughs> first impressions online, which had me a little bit worried, <laughs> and I bumped this up a little bit. It was higher. It was. I switched it out with one other number. Um, but I am still interested because I do. I, I forget exactly what Carlo Rossi did now, but I, I do like some of his games. Oh, he did. A lot. He done, he's yeah. done a ton of Hava Kid games, for one, but he's also done... There's one recently he did that I like. Divinity liked. Derby, which was a reprint, I think, of an older Hab game. Habengut. That, that, that's what I like him from, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, Habengut. And Mysterious yeah. Forest from uh, Yellow. A new one, the tile laying Picasimo, game. I think you guys played that Picasso one. was a party game also from them. That's not bad. It was a clever game. Red Peak, but we haven't played that one yet, but we got it. Remember, we were looking how cool that oh, one looked? Oh, that's it. I was looking at it the other day. Red Peak is sort of like a speed game. And Tricky Druids, which is also coming out at Gen Con. This dude is on fire. This is his Gen Con. He's yeah. the new Wolfgang Warsh. That's it. Sure. Watch out, Warsh. He comes with you. Sit down. Warsh out. Rosie's here. Anyway, I haven't said a whole lot about this game, but I really am not going to. I'm just excited <laughs> for it. Uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. I got to see this thing and mess with it. I'm just excited about it. Hit it. My number four is a two-player game that I want to play solely based on the theme. I thought you were going to say I want to play solo, you know? Uh, even though the theme is probably in real life fairly divisive, and that's Watergate. So Watergate from Capstone uh -huh. Games. Uh, this is, from what I understand, a shorter Twilight Struggle. This is from Uncommon. Essentially. Is that Uncommon? No, it's uh, uh, Capstone, Capstone Games. Capstone and games. Frost It. They're the guys who made those big yeah, yeah. They're, they're calendars with the things in Yeah, yeah. So Watergate, apparently one person is trying to cover up the Watergate, and the other person is trying to uncover it. I actually don't have a picture for Watergate. I couldn't find any. Yeah. And a third player is the guy that's watching what's going on. Hey, there's something going on in one of y'all's rooms. Wow, okay, that's like a very obscure thing. <laughs> Sam's yeah. going to make the Forrest Gump Sorry. expansion. It can yes. go with like 30 different games. Third player. You, just, you plug it in <laughs> to a whole bunch of little games. I'm playing this game. Wait, hang on. Here's the Forrest Gump module. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. I like it. That's so, But I'm excited about this about one that. because the theme is interesting to me. I like historical themes. And two, I like the, the concept of the back and forth, asymmetrical stuff. So I've, heard, I've also heard good reports straight across from the people so who have Tyus played it. Matthias Kramer also, who's a good designer. They've done a lot. Uh, Matthias Kramer is the old Wolfgang Warsh. <laughs> uh, this one interested me, but honestly, I saw Capstone Games and thought this is going to be too much. Well, no, they have their lighter games now, yeah, I guess. Yeah, but I'm, I'm, I know Capstone for their heavier Euros, and so I was That's okay. worried. I'm, you played Black really Angel, man. You, you did that. What are you worried about? This is going to be lighter than that. There's no question. My number four, no question. <laughs> End of statement. This yeah. conversation is over. <laughs> number three. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> All right, my number three. Um, uh, the first time I played the... <laughs> <laughs> that was thunder. I don't want to... <laughs> this guy's the Get first for time, the you say? <laughs> <laughs> Liar! <laughs> All right, so... Oh, man. 
<laughs> it's raining almost every day this week. Choose yeah. your own adventure. War with the evil power master. Oh, oh. now it's Ares. Z Man Games. Booth 1629. You played this? Uh, no, I have not played this. He was this talking is about the, the first one. That, this is this in Target yet? I know it's coming out soon. I don't know. Oh, the original I don't know. The said. original one, the uh, House of Danger. I feel when like we it's about time that, to make a Target run. I just remember when we played that at the gathering, not this year, but last year, we sat down saying, okay, let's just play through a couple chapters. And, you oh, know, we were going to we'll, play we'll through one. <laughs> yeah, well, no, we said, we said, we'll just play through a little bit. We ended up playing through the entire book. Yeah, it was really fun. Because we did not want to stop. That's how fun this was. And so when I saw that this was coming out... <laughs> And this one sounds even All more the over the top than the first one right? was. Right? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It just looks. It also looks like it's more of a game. Yeah, they, yeah. they kicked that up a little bit. Yeah, from what so I'm, I'm really looking forward to giving this one a try. Uh, <coughs> bring it, bring a copy back, please. Um, so that is War with the Evil Power Master. Oh, 100% we're getting Z-Man this somehow. Games. Booth 1629. Otter says he wants Mind a Forrest Gump expansion for Sushi Go. A dead shrimp. Oh, there it is. Shrimp. Done. There you go. Oh, yeah. The Jenny. Popcorn shrimp. It's called the Bubba. No, it's the, the Bubba, Bubba expansion, expansion, man. <laughs> Done. Can you believe that? I love it. All right, my number three. Uh, I was in the mountains. Now I'm going to the forest in Bosk. Oh, you haven't played this yet? I have not played this yet, and it looks neat. Every time I hear this, for a this name, I think Star Wars. It's really bothersome to you, huh? It does. I'm but like, a the boss? They who? made a game of a boss? What? Floodgate oh, Games trees. told me that they're going to replace that. <laughs> well, Bosk actually means a thicket or group of bushes or trees. Yeah. Interesting. Like, there's a Bosk. No one will ever say that. No. <laughs> but oh, it's, it's very I'm similar in a, Spanish. I turn around looking for a bounty hunter. You know, in Spanish, it's... Uh, the forests or the woods, you know, is bos- bosque. It's just like add like two letters to that. Oh, I remember that now. So What's the name of the bounty hunter in Spanish? Bosque. <laughs> Thank you. Or bosque. <laughs> or bosque. Oh my goodness, is bosque coming back? Is bosque coming back? Oh, here? he's gonna shoot you, pow pow. <laughs> Nobody says that. I don't know what that Nobody is. Nobody says that. All right. Anyway, Boss here looks great. I mean, I've never played it. Like Tom said, he's played it. It's been around a little bit. I did see it at a couple of places. Uh, UKGE, I think, maybe, or at one of our Khan conventions. was consistently being taught. But I haven't played it yet, and it looks good. From what I understand, it has sort of two diverse parts. One of them is uh, placing the trees and placing removing things, them. and then like area control, yeah. right, how, is one of them. How does this differ from... Um, a Looks lot. Like this is, it does. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I, I, it looks similar just because of the standees. Sure. Now, in the first half of the game, you place the trees, and then you're going to see each row and column who has more. That's it. Then in the second half, the trees will drop leaves in a certain kind of way, and then you're trying to drop leaves and control these areas. So it's it's a little. I mean, it's okay. actually a lot different, but it's yeah, it is. It's about as mean though. Really? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Uh, cool. I'm excited for it. So my number three is Bosk. No, that's it. You've played it. I, I have it, but I am excited to do it. Well, that's I'm sure it. he's going to have one of, the, one of the games on my list. All right. Do it. What do you got? My number three, I think Z's played, but I have not played yet. But I like these dice rolling and see what happened games, and that's Foodies. No, I haven't played it. I haven't played it either, uh, but I really want to. But someone in our group played it. Eric. Eric Summer. He played Hang it on one second. Con, I'm pretty sure. Did call you? Him up. Call him up. <laughs> Eric. All right, so bo- Foodies. <laughs> boss. Foodies here. I like the artwork for it a lot from Come On Games, and this is, from what I understand, their entry into the Machi Koro slash space space thing where you'll be rolling dice and getting things. I also like the idea of being a foodie. I think that's fun. That's a cool theme. These you put food caricatures into a game. are great. Oh, my. They're very caricaturist, though, right? Yeah, yeah, is that yeah, yeah, dude yeah. from, like, Imperial Rome? He has a fish under his arm. He's about to. He's like a sushi master or something like that, right? That's a sushi master? Well, he's about to take that fish and make some food for for dinner. He's doing something. I think they're they're hilarious. They, it has a very Pixar look to it. Yeah. No, I'm pretty I'm pretty excited about this. I'm I'm looking forward to uh, trying it out. I heard mostly good reaction. Not completely though. Some people were not as big, but so, some people like Robert Geislinger from the Dice Tower played this like 20 times. I mean, he was like really in love with it. So he chins that guy. That guy has. drinks too much coffee. One, two, three, four. Well, that's what happens. This so one is apparently each one's for foodie, a different section of the, the you have meal. A huge nose and you're fat. 
Well, no, that guy has muscles too, though. He's he might be fat, but looks like he he's could got take muscle me out. under the fat. Well, that's he's still muscle. Bumbling. At least he doesn't have muscle over the fat. That's <laughs> that'd, be, that'd be pretty horrific. All right. That sounds like an experiment gone wrong. That sounds really messed up. <laughs> when like got teleported and zombie came back, side organized foodies edition. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, it's made by. Come on, it could happen. Could happen. Ooh. Anyway, foodies, this one I suspect will be a game that you'll see being played a lot, especially since, come on, as far as I remember, looking at their list, they have only two games they're showing at the con, and that's this one and the zombie side. So you're going to be playing one or the other, and I think this one will be their next, um, what was the marble game? Uh, Gizmos. Gizmos, or this will be their next Gizmos. You watch. Cool. Cool. Number two. My number two is from Colossal Games, booth 1913, and it is called Terrors of London. Mm. A two-player game. Now, I'm usually not... This looks a little dark, Samuel. ...on board for this dark of a theme, but it it's Victorian horror, so it's a little bit... What happens... Oh, oh I do like that artwork there it's, a lot. Yeah, I really like the artwork. I really like... The that's the graphic thing from, uh, design of the game. That's Fenris, yeah. No, it says the never-ending story monster gone bad. Oh, yeah, you could. Yeah, you. I can see that. Yeah. Na na na. The big dog. Na 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 na. That he wrote on. I don't know the name of the dog. Oh gosh. Na na na. Fal Fal Core. That's right. Fal Core. Thank you, Chris. So this, I'm I'm interested in the gameplay. It's hand management. It's also deck building. Um, and it's it's competitive. So you're going against the other person. It's not just I'm building up my deck and trying to score as many points. You're you're trying to build up your deck, but it's your army of monsters that you're sending against your opponent's army of monsters. And uh, you're trying to whittle the other person down to zero life before okay. they do the same thing to you. So I like that competitive aspect of a in a deck building game. Um, I've liked you know Star Realms is very similar. Idea. I'm not saying that these are similar, but it's the same idea. And I really like Star Realm, so I'm thinking that I'll like this as well. Uh, so that's my number two, Terrors of London. Very nice. My number two, I know you've played Cartographers. Uh, a, what do they call it? A role player tale? Uh, I played it two days ago, yeah. Yeah. And um, this one is... This is the roll and write. Well, now I get confused between. Yes, these. this is yeah. the roll and write game. Yeah, and this one you are going to be filling in locations on uh, a sheet. You have like different patterns basically that you're filling in, and then you're you're going to have monsters thrown on there by the other players sometimes if you are you know get the wrong roll or whatever. It sounds interesting to me. I like the world in, and I love this is. Hopefully it'll, this will pan out. The fact that they've taken role player and actually grown from that other games, and they feel organic, like the lockup game. Yeah, which lockup is, like, is you know, really escaping good. Escaping from a, escaping from a prison or whatever, and then you've got this one, which is like planners building the world. You know, cartographers exploring the map. That feels more natural to me than like when they did AEG did the whole love letter thing, whatever they they called that world. Oh, what was that world? And there was called? like one called Domain or something, and there was uh, I forget what they were called, was but it Tempest or the Tempest Universe or World. That was not organic. It didn't feel right. This grew out of one game, which to, actually came from Dungeons and Dragons originally. Well, sure. I mean, it's kind of like a tongue-in-cheek Dungeons and Dragons, yeah, but. Um, I do enjoy the way it works, you know, and uh, or or the way it's developed into a bigger universe, bigger story. So I'm excited to try this one. I haven't played the other one either. I just want to see. I know I've heard good things about both a little bit. Some, you know, from people more than others, but I do want to try these out. So, Cartographer is a role player tale. My number two pick. My number two is our first crossover. I really thought we'd have more. Wow, you're right. We haven't had any, have we? This is a crossover with Sam, and Choose neither one of us has played it, but that is Cloud Spire oh, okay. from Chip Theory Games. Oh. Again, I liked the Too Many Bones, but this one is actually more of interest to me because if I have to pick between a straight-up dungeon crawl or an adventure game, the adventure game always wins. Yeah. I like the whole idea of going around and doing things. That That's a neat concept to me. Um, that's pretty much what I got. You know, these guys have these guys have now earned my interest. 
It's still, we had like a special Gen Con connection with them. Oh, yeah. Since it was three years ago, I think, we had a booth right next to them. Four. Four years ago. Really? It was, yeah, it was that long ago. So last year was that year. The year before that was the knocking the swords over. Yes. And the year, the year before that was there. And then, yeah, I last, guess it was four last years Last year ago. we stabbed that man. Remember that? <laughs> Yes, but um, no, we didn't. <laughs> but uh, no, we actually had a booth next to them. Yeah, and our fans kept walking in their booth. So, but that was yeah. before they had too many bones. Now their fans will be walking yeah. in our booth. Yeah, their their booth dwarfs ours at this point. Yeah, it does. It does. And they, they usually have like a tent. You go inside yes. the tent, you're like, what is in here? And they're like, get in here by the gate. And you're like, oh, wait, what? And you walk out with a gate, but so, no wallet. <laughs> but you're richer. Because Somehow. you have a shoebox full of half-priced zombies. <laughs> that's how you make <laughs> wow. That's how you make lemonade. You know, <laughs> that is. That should not be how you make lemonade. That's a lot of meta right there. Yeah, that was some meta soup. Meta data. Anyway, meta data. this game looks fine. My number two, Cloud Spire. All right. And finally, number one. Okay, this is where everyone's going to be disappointed that we didn't mention a specific game. There will be many great games that are not on our list. True. And these what do you think to be is Sam's pick here? True. Well, uh, Sam's pick he's already, that I would have said was already on here. Sam, this it's not a crossover, pick. right? Nope. Okay. Yeah, then I have no idea. You thought it would be what, Reavers? Because you thought I he thought it would be Reavers, it. yeah, yeah. Um, well, I didn't know if he had played it, but if he hadn't played no, it, I would have thought it was number five. Played it at, I played it's it not at a five. crossover, you said. Well, it might be across. No, it's not going to be across. Well, no, 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 no. It's not so going to be either, I don't think. Gosh, I got no idea. It's another expansion. Oh. oh. <laughs> that was it. If you, if you thought that sounded judgmental, I didn't mean it to sound so little judgmental. I meant, oh. Jeez. <laughs> okay, let me try again, too. Oh. Wait, an expansion? Yeah. What, what company is coming out with an expansion? Have I played this expansion? When did the yet? game come out? The original oh, game. Wow. Oh, 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 oh. Wow. Matigo. Inish. No. No, really? No. Oh, in your face. He just straight mocked you, man. That was pretty mean. <laughs> really? The Inish yeah. expansion? I thought you'd be excited about that one. I am excited about it, but mm -hmm. it's it's kind of died down. But this one, bang the dice game, undead or alive. Oh. Oh, this is an expansion? Wait, yes. let me do it again. Oh. oh, I thought this was its whole, a whole game. No, no, this is an expansion. It's an expansion. Oh. It comes with two dice, man. Oh, I didn't look oh. at the picture. Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. What is it? What about Bob? <laughs> Version of the top ten? Oh. Uh. Mm. Oh, Z. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> going let's, on here. let's stop with this. Um, I have yet to dislike an expansion for this game. How many have there been? One. <laughs> so. Come on, man. What kind of statement is this? <laughs> I love it. So, DV Yoshi is uh, booth 2109, and uh, that's where they're going to have this. Uh, again, uh, it looks really fun, and I, I really enjoy Bang the Dice game. You guys know this. And this shot to the top of my list when I saw that it was on the on on the thingamadoogie hopper uh, on the screen. So that um, is a huge difference. I saw this and I was like, okay, and just kept scrolling. Yeah, no, I, I, I didn't even make it look. I, I, this my is eye one too. of my favorite games, and they usually do very very well with their expansions. Uh, even with Bang the Dice, uh, Bang the Card Game, their expansions were good. Yeah, but they usually do very well with their expansions, and so I'm I'm right. Totally on board I was with more this interested one. because they got three more of those uh, their their escape room in a box games. The uh, yeah, what are those? Oh, whoa, 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 uh, the Dexcape. Dexcape. Yeah. They got three of them. Yeah, well, I'm some like, of those wow. have come out in English. Wow, well, three I haven't played. Yeah, yeah, right. There is one that is brand new though. So I am <clears throat> very much looking forward to this one. My number one. All right, my number one. Well, we got to guess yours now? If you want to. I'm not going to try. Not really. Lock up. I don't know. No, it's from uh, Yellow. I have no idea. Really? You I haven't heard know. about this? This is a Bruno, new Bruno Catala game called oh. Ishtar. 
Oh, wow, that cover I certainly is attracting I me. I saw this. This uh, looks, this looks, looks awesome, neat. Z. I actually that have a little clip seven. here. I have a little clip oh, that I man, filmed. You may, man, why? Shoot. So, this is the game. I, this is like a little bit of an overview if it plays. If it doesn't, that's okay, too. But there it goes. So Wait, we can do is, video now? No, you can't. I can't. So, anyway, this is a little clip of the overview that I did at, uh, I want to say I was at Origins and filmed a little bit so you could see the board there, the gem, some of the little buildings, player boards. It looks neat. Sort of a connection game, which Katala has been doing a lot lately. And it looks it looks good to me. I like the look of it. I'm, I'm excited to see how it actually all works together. I don't really know that, but I, I'm happy to see another big box game from yeah. both Yellow right. and from Bruno Katala. That cover... I would just pass right on by, man. Really? I think it's all right. It's minimalistic, but I don't dislike it. I like the look of it. Wasn't Ishtar like one of the most popular movies ever made? No, you're thinking of Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> Ishtar Wars. Understandable confusion there. Anyway, Ishtar, my number one pick. Uh, what do you got? My number one pick's another crossover with Sam. Oh, Sam, what is it? Tell because him, man, what it is. Choose your own adventure? No. I haven't played this game yet, therefore it's in my top half. Obscurio. And that is Reavers of oh, Midgard. Oh, Reavers of Midgard. Oh, okay. Because okay. I love Champions oh, so of Midgard. You thought you might have the same number one as him, then. I did. I, well, I thought it'd be high on his list. But I, I'm super pumped about this. I saw the final copy of it. It's on some dice, which is why we haven't played it yet. Because right. had we brought this home from Dice Tower Con, it would have been played. Yep. Multiple times and been reviewed. Yep. It would have been played live. Anyway, yep. we'll get it after it Gen Con. Okay, all right, cool. But I really like this universe. It being a heavy Euro game, that's no problem for me. I'm cool with that, a heavier Euro game. Wow. No, no, hell, no. You, hell, I'm under the bus. No, whatever. You say yourself that you're looking forward mostly to the Ameritrash Yeah, but he didn't call himself am. dumb. You did that. <laughs> True. I didn't say the word dumb. The prosecution <laughs> rests. <laughs> Objection. <laughs> Leading, probably. God, uh, argumentative. That works. I don't know. They just shout out words in the movies. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Objection. He's ugly. Move to strike. Overruled. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, this one is super. Um, I'm super pumped about this one. It looks great. It, the designers are cool. The company, Gray Fox, is great. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard nothing bad about it from anyone who has played it. Right. Even Sam liked it. <laughs> Now, that's, now I'm under the bus that's in the shade. Throwing you under ding, the bus. Ding. ding. That's right. Anyway, but I hear it's different. You know, it's it, it is a different it game. Is very so much I'm, different. I'm, I don't know. I'm interested in trying it out. That's cool. my number one. Cool beans. Those are good lists, fellas. Yes. So again, we got a couple more lists coming for you. But also, uh, tomorrow we'll be doing a live. You know, here's what we're doing at Gen Con. Do you have questions about Gen Con? You never gone before? Ask them. That's tomorrow in our back talk. That's also at one o'clock. I want to say tomorrow. Usually. Sounds right. Um, now, there's a lot of games we did not mention. There's a lot sure. more cool things. We actually talked about the fact that we have more games on our ones we've already played that we were interested in than ones that we haven't. Yeah, by far for me. So here's uh, let's see. I'll ask them. No one mentioned Abomination Air Frankenstein. Looks cool. We have a copy. We just haven't. There's so many games, right? So it just again we couldn't make more than Might ten. Play through it next week. I don't yeah. know. Mike. Uh, let's see. What else are people asking for? Carnival Monster. Uh, that's being reviewed. My I've already reviewed it. It's going up next week. My review of that. I liked it. Um, Power Rangers Heroes of the Grid. That one I just hope is good. That's, I know it sounds weird, but my, my connection with Power Rangers is nothing. Like, I was born too early to really like it. I mean, it was, when I was a teenager was when Power Rangers was out, and I thought it was stupid. Yeah. So, it had that retro, retro cinematography to it where it was like cheesy graphics but on purpose. Sure, but if I was a kid, I might have loved it. Right. As a teenager, I was kind of like, this doesn't even look like real fights. Right. You know, they looked all fake. So I have no connection to it that way. It's from Renegade. They're not known for miniature games. But this may be good. It may be fantastic. I just don't have that, like, oh, I got to play Power Rangers. Who is it from? Who's producing it? Renegade? Renegade is one of the publishers, oh, really? but the other, I don't, it's like a co-publisher. And it is definitely somebody. TV show, not, not, not movie. I don't know. I did like that newest movie, actually. Yeah, no, I, I heard liked, that was pretty good. I liked the movie. It wasn't bad, but... TV King's Dilemma, I don't know anything about oh, that man. one. I wanted to put it on my list just based on the 
cover art. It looks really cool. Um, I don't know what that one is. is that the guy sitting on the throne, kind of looking down. Yeah, it had I a saw very the cover. Yeah, like Conan-esque feel to it. Yeah. The Vindication expansion. Um, that I'm excited about too, but I didn't put expansions on my list. But that was just a personal decision only I made. Yes, that is true. <laughs> That's the third. Um, Go for broke. Is Red Raven coming out with anything? I don't think so, but I think they're pushing their... They have definitely, I saw on the list, a couple of demos there of uh, Sleeping Gods and Rome. What they have there R -O -A -M, is... Right? Ancient World 2nd Edition. Rome, uh-huh. Ancient, Ancient, Ancient World 2nd Ancient World 2nd edition. edition is what yeah. they have there that's on the list, yeah. That's it. Did I see the remake of Starfares of Catan? Have they posted pictures of it online yet? I don't know. I have not I seen... I saw pictures... Of the cover... I may... I don't know. I'll tell you what. If they have that there, I'll take pictures because <laughs> yeah. I'm really what pumped about that. What they tell you that, you can't? That I will not take pictures, but I'll tell Jason to take pictures. I will pictures. not take pictures while they're watching. And then you'll bail him out. Of jail? You, you Gen, think Gen Con jail? don't play. <laughs> Does Gen Con do that? They used to do the Klingon jail. I don't think they do that anymore. You could like pay to have someone put in jail as a, like a, for charity, and then he'd be put in jail for five minutes, and then they get out. You know, like the one they have at... The Harvest Festival and yeah. stuff. Jail for five minutes? That doesn't sound effective. Not if I pay. I pay like $500. What do you mean? You're, you're I mean, all day. If you're in the middle of doing something, then they drag you off for five minutes. you got to stop what you're doing. You'll do something to get out of it. Yeah. Could okay. you imagine? You're like, you're about to make a move? Nope. Or that really slow guy in your game group is like, okay. And they're like, oh, you're going to jail. So they're like, I'll pay his, I know, I'll pay right? his fine right now. <laughs> Please, sir. Because he'd go to jail, come back, and be like, now where were we? Now that broke start my entire chain yeah. of thought. <laughs> All right. What um, else? Let's see. Mezzo. I don't think Mezzo is there other I than did, demoing. It wasn't on the list, so I doubt it. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Flotilla from WizKids. Are they, are they still, like, troubleshooting that game? It must be just production now. Well, production? It's, it's miniatures and stuff. You didn't put the one I thought would be on your list was Sierra West, actually. No, yeah, that's good. Um, you have to. Rainer's watching. I don't want to. No, get in no, no. I mean, it, also got the Teotihuacan expansion, and um, that's awesome, too. The um, I played it a bunch. I've talked about it a bunch, but I think I'm more excited to get back to Terror Below because I played once a long time ago. Got it. I see. Okay. But Sierra West, I played a whole bunch. I, you're you're, cause you're I, really liking it. Because I had to because it's a bunch of modules. Got it. So you have to try. And I play Solitaire, which is why I said I really like that mode, Solitaire. I played that multiple times. Um, so absolutely, I recommend it, yeah. Again, I will reiterate, So because you know nobody gets a carte blanche here, game is really slow with more than two players, like a lot of downtime. And that first play is going to be a grindy first play. Be aware of that going into it. I recommend lower player counts, but it's good. Otter says we can all chip in for Jason's bail money. No, son. We went through Jason. What I, I, I need to buy that ugly shirt <laughs> that you don't like. <laughs> apparently, I'd rather do that than bail Jason. Yeah, Barrage is not going to be there either. Barrage. I think they're kidding. <laughs> Thank you Stop for this kidding. nonsense! You were about to get sandwiched. Oceans from Sam North Star. Ver verbally, sandwiched? verbally. I don't think Oceans is there. Oceans from North Star. I think they oh. might be demoing it. I didn't see it on the list of games that's going to be there. Oh, the only thing from Northside is going to be is that Dirty Pig game, and that did not make my top ten. There's actually a reprint I found out the other day of this really old German card game. The Dirty Pig? Well, well, whatever. Which just never came out in English, I think. Anyway, so again, there's also a possibility that we'll get there, and there's some game that no one... Fantasy Flight really likes to do that. Yeah. Like, oh, you didn't know this game was going to be there? And also... Renegade Games did that a couple years ago when they had Clank in Space mm -hmm. that right. they announced the day beforehand. Um, we knew about that, but I don't, I'll just say straight up this year, I don't know about anything that's going to be there secretively. Yeah. Um, so, and there's lots of really cool games, lots of games we didn't talk about, like I, the one from Restoration Games, the Unmatched is going to be there. That's super yes. fun. There's, yes. I could have made a top 20 of games I've already played. So I just picked five that were kind of on my mind lately, and I'm glad that we didn't have a lot of crossover, actually. Yeah, that's good. It gets a lot on your minds, you know. And uh, Return to Dark Tower was also going to be demoed there, too, from Restoration. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of good demos also. If you want to go there and uh, get into some demos, there'll be a lot of juicy stuff. 
All right, so we'll be talking about what we're doing at the show and taking questions and just talking about Gen Con in particular tomorrow at 1 o'clock. Until then, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. Have a great day. Sam Healy. See you on the flip side, folks. Take care. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast, or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.